And my wife will be the one that will remind me. Is it not because of me? Remember, you told me that God told you this, that you shouldn't do this. Did you do it? <laughs> See that? It was a mistake of what said. Paul said, three times I have done this. And when it came upon me, I begged the Lord. I begged the Lord. And God will whisper to him and say, Don't worry. I, I knew you would make a mistake. Mm. The first one is what? The first one is when you die, people live. The second one is you become serious. The third one is you will never miss your assignment. You focus. The fourth one is God used it to protect his covenant with you. I'll show you something. To tell you that God knows everything. Give me Isaiah. Isaiah 52. It should be 17, but start from 15. Ibarum no mo zohani la dasi wo Ahu wo mo nye isha ha mo niru niru le Unye wo mo kuke meri weze Help me now Abu meri Jeju wo mo Thank you Are you there, sir? One, two, three, two Yes One, two, three, two, three No, no Did I say 52? 57. Shower Read 15 for me. Isaiah 57 and 15, I read. Yes. For God says that I am lost in one. Listen very well. Who inhabits eternity? Oh my God. Whose name is holy? He's, he's in fast. Anytime God is emphasizing his name, he's repeating his name in the scripture. Know that he's going to say something that you will not believe. That is real. Anytime God mentions his name, he emphasizes his name. I am this, I am that, I am that. He's only letting you to know. What I'm saying is very serious. Never you doubt it. It might not make sense to you, but it's very true. That's why. Look at how he emphasizes his name. 15. Start saying it immediately. For God said the high and lofty one. One. Number one. Mm -hmm. That inhabited eternity. Number two. Whose name is holy? No matter, he has mentioned himself three times. Continue. I dwell in the high and holy place. Number four. With him also that is of a contract and humble spirit. Say with him that is of a contract and, and humble spirit. He knew that Apostle Paul had contract and humble spirit. And he dwells with him always. He even decided to show him God help. Continue. To revive the spirits of the humble. To revive him, his spirit, when he prays, when he gets the tongue on the flesh, continue. And to revive the heart of the contract ones. Uh huh. Sixteen. Yes. For I will not contend forever. Neither will I be always wrong. For the spirit to fail before me. <laughs> continue. And the souls which I have made. Seventeen. For the liberty of his commerciousness was I wrong. For his mistake I was so wrong and I activated the fire of affliction. Continue. And smote him. And smote him. I hid me. I hid away from him. And was wrong. I was angry. And he went on forward. He continued. He did it not as he did it once. He said, Paul oh, said he said three times. Continue. In the way of his heart. Mm. I have seen his ways. I have seen he is helpless. I have seen he is weak. I have found out that he's not doing it intentionally. I have found out he has a contract and a broken spirit. Continue. And we hear him. I will hear him. I will hear him also. It's okay. You see, I will not contend with him any longer. I will hear him. So God knew what was going to do it. Then he prepared fire of affliction. So that he wouldn't go further than that. So that he would only. So which verse are you now? I mean, uh, read now, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. That's where we are going to finish. We are almost finished. I'm going to the second point now. I mean the 
the sixth. Six. Is it the fifth? The fi I'm going to the fifth. Yes. The fifth. Yes. I've already said the fourth. The fourth. I'm, the fourth. I'm not going to the, the fifth. fifth. Okay, sir. I'm reading twelve past five again. No, 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 not five. Continue. See, you've read it already. Six now. Uh huh. Listen very well. But though I, I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. You see, one of the reasons God allow fire of affliction is to humble us so that we will not brag or push and intimidate others with the great revelation he has given unto us. Living time with time. You know, let me tell you, it's only when you understand the meaning of sin. It's only when you understand the meaning of sin that you will understand what I'm teaching. A lot of you here don't know the meaning, you don't even know what you say. What you are calling, what you call sin is the effect of sin. You don't know what you say. You don't know what you say. If I tell you, if I tell you what is sin, you will not believe it. Sin is refusing to grow. When you refuse to go, the effect of things that happen, fornication, lie, criminal act, all these things. You don't want to grow. That's it. It's not, it's the effect of all you do. Eating judgment, lying, doing this. It's the effect of sin. Because you have refused. Did I tell you how we commit sin? One, when we run away from suffering. Two, when we are not at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing, with the right people. Break away. It's hard for anyone that has ever broken away to say that it is complete 100% divine will of God. Any person that has ever broken away from any church. Unless when God asked him to separate, he followed the right way. And he was sent and was blessed. Anyone that broke away, ask him where the church he broke away from. Did they get his life? Because that's his modern church. Do they get his life? Do you pay your time here? Pay my time to who? That small boy? That stupid boy? That what that, that man leave it. On the last day we we'll see. It. And Paul stood before King Agrippa, a man that have made a lot of mistakes. Say I have not one day sin against God. I have not sin against heavenly vision. I have not. A man that carries heavenly vision. Say that I should boast. But I will not boast. Do you know why? You if God has not given fire of affliction, you will be boasting. It would have been anybody. Come on, lie down. Have you been to heaven? Where you bring your head? head. Even those that have not been to heaven, they will, in Nairobi, from the airport, he was marching on people in that time. One of them was so foolish that he saw a beautiful woman, he couldn't hold himself. He started kissing him. Under the Michael, come on. Started kissing the lady who wanted to minister. And this backman called him. No, you come back and no one is watching you. He said, No, no, God is said I should remove by his kissing. Mm. God is said I should remove it by kissing. He could have hold himself. I was supposed to went to heaven and saw God shoot man with God and came back. See, the little man want to share, want to boast. Do you know what Paul said? Paul said, never in my life will I share my good testimony. I will only share my infirmities. I will only share my affliction. Because any time I want to share how successful God has made me. What was that success? The pastor among everyone that went to heaven when he was alive. But God gave it to him because of many suffering he was going to suffer. The same lashes they gave to Jesus, 39 they gave to Apostle Paul. Everything Jesus passed through, this man passed through. Because the only way I can keep this vision is to bring him to see that heaven is good. And God brought him to the God heaven. But on one condition, don't even tell anybody. But as a man, you always want to brag sometimes. So fire for affliction is to shut you up when you want to make yourself proud. As a sister, to shut you up. Whenever you want to make many, 
You see, I prayed about this trip and God said, benefit of it. They have passed, they have paid the price. Go and tell them so that when I start blessing them, they will know why I'm blessing them. Amen. They have paid the part, the price. Now, church, let me tell you one thing. My members, my children, let me tell you one thing you don't know. If you are faithful under this ministry, before God allows anything to happen to you, we come to your pastor. Because we don't know all these things. He can never. Now, if your pastor is spending enough time with Jesus and with God, he will get some, how do I say it? Preferences. Why? Because of his prayer life and his lifestyle. And what is this? And when you are baptizing God, when you are baptizing God, when you are the Bible that others are reading, that's what I am in Australia. You don't need to read the Bible, just for them you understand the Bible. Because every step I take you. When that starts happening, which is, give me Hebrews, give me Hebrews, let me show you. Read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, and read verse um, 17. Two of them, Hebrews 13, 7, and 17. Remember them, which have the rule over you, over you. Mm -hmm. who have spoken unto you. Who are the one preaching, speaking the word of God over your life? Continue. What about whose faith followed? See, if they, the end. If they have faith, if there's a difference between belief and faith, believe. You are in the level of the devil. Anyone that believes is a, 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 in the same classroom with the devil. Give me James chapter 2, verse 19. Quickly, I'm sorry. James 2, 19. 19. So that's what I'm talking about. If your life is between, somebody in belief is different from faith, I will show you the difference now. That believers equal. That they are one God. No. That dwells well. Your congratulation. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> But you don't forget, you finish it. The devil also believes. You are in the same class with the devil. And tremble. The devil, when he will call, he will slap you. He will break your jaw. He will tear your book. You are in the same class with the devil. Stop bragging those shit. You only believe the devil also believes. <laughs> but devil cannot have faith. Because devil cannot please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah, can be yes. What is faith? What you believe? I've read the Bible. I can't be sick. I can't die. I... And when the devil says, I'm going to kill you, says, you come back today. That is faith. Action. Adding action to your belief. Because you convince God with belief, or you convince men with action. Mm -hmm. Nobody will follow you with that. That's what he's talking about. Those that have action, those that have passed from the level of belief to faith. Do you need to tell you whether I'm a man of faith or not? Those that were with me, you know it. If I perish, I perish. You are still seeing it. When next I'm coming to Malaysia, you see it again. Maybe next time I come with my private. No, not private. I don't need private. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to build school and give scholarship. I want to use my money to train to people, to bring people to where I am. Instead of what is private? What, what am I using it for? Bishop when he was alive, he had five private jets. He sold two and put three in the airport. When he wanted to use it, he would go and it was on commercial. None of them here, all of them bought the private jet. But Abishop Bessie, oh, they gave it to him free. So what do I need? It? And my father was not flying out uh, private jet every day. I can't do it. I get private jet. I, if God give me money for private jet, I use this for scholarship. Men, education is good. I make people, I help them. I might not give them one million, but I will educate them to anywhere they want to go. On scholarship. That's my heartbeat. To the devil belief. Don't, don't shout you know anything. You are the same class. That's why the devil. And that's why every time you are praying, when you break your job, the devil die. The devil get away. The devil. But we that are in the level of faith, there's no devil. For without faith, it's, it's impossible, impossible to please God. The devil cannot please God. He has passed. He can never. He is condemned. Do you think I'm making sense? Do you want me? Do you, are you tired? No, 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 no. You want me to go on? Yes, 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 yes. I don't pray for when I start like this. People 
it on the God who will give me the right one. I'll start destroying every problem before me. Where were we before we went to uh, Where? There was seven, one seven, seven was This pastor was reading for us. Where is that? Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew 13, now, 13 7, now, 17. 17. Now, let me show you something. If this church is genuine, if this church is genuine, God can never in any way come to any of you to deal with you. That is why you don't understand what it means to be under a genuine pastor. And I thank God, I've had the testimony that my pastor is preaching the truth. He has not left that truth. It doesn't matter. Continue, listen, what did I say? Obey them. Uh -huh. That have the rule over you. Uh -huh. And submit yourself. Submit yourself. But they watch for your souls. They are the one God will ask. Continue. As they that must give account, and they may do it with joy, not with grief. You know what it means? If you are insultive to a pastor, and it's to you, and it's a pastor that is walking by faith, say be careful. Even if you know he's wrong, don't teach him as if you are teaching him. You <laughs> are a teacher. Use wisdom to tell me. Because even in you feeling you are right, the day God will bring your case before him, if he's longer, he will say he's a Christian. I cannot go if you leave him. And that man that just insulted me, even though he's right. But here is Pastor Moses. None of the children that served me, none of your members when I was here, is your son. They are your brothers. You can't do them anything. They can't become them. They are not going to deceive you. They are the elders of this church. The ones I'm talking about is the one you are visiting has given birth to through the word of God. They are your own children. Your elders are not your children. They are the foundation of this church. They are the true church of here. But those elders shouldn't insult you. And that is why you should have respect for me because of them. Because I'm the one that controls them. Not you. You can't expect them to be calling you daddy, papa, mama, mama, all this. They can't do it. They are your brothers. They level with you. They know when you were there. They knew when you started. They knew everything about you. But when you raise your own children, your own kids, they will be the one to say, as elders, obey this man of God. We know he is a faithful man of God. When we were serving Pastor Joseph, he was the one choosing. We were not the one choosing. Obey him, bro. because they are not even Pastor Joseph is about him. Bro. Don't insult him. But when this one insults you or anything, don't worry. Man, if you have, if you feel I'm your fa father, my brothers, I'm making it hard. And I say, which of them? Osi. Osi, what is your problem? What is your problem, Osi? Because when I'm giving account of you, I can do it in a wicked way, and you get nothing. Moses cannot give account of you, people. But that's the problem we're having in the church. He can't. I'm the one. And if you say you don't need me in this place, no worries. We are walking. I can never break rank. But these are spiritual principles. And when my honor is given to me, your elders is in place. Because they are father, the one that intercedes on their behalf. None of them come. I don't have any meeting with them, and I don't want it. I want if there's anything, I want it to come to you, Pastor Moses. Some of them that are here with you, they knew when you, when you came, they were already here with me before you came. That's how the church is wrong. It's layer by layer. It's not side by side. You come, you bear your own children. Your two children, you raise them. When you finish and go another place or hand over this church, those your children will become the elders. And the next pastor will have to prove his ministry too by raising his own children. That's how church grows from generation to generation, generation to generation, generation to generation. Naturally, they know how you start. They know your beginning. They know everything. They know the day I will take you. They know everything. Why would they drop on your head? They will 
insult you. They would do anything. But the only way to control them is through me and my wife. If you tell them sit down, they will sit down. Stand up, they will stand up. And if church will understand the principle and follow it that way. I come in our baby shopping. You see how I talk to all my youth, fellow, all my youth members on Facebook. I respond to someone will say, shut up, Pastor Joseph. I say, that's people weird. But if I have any problem with any of them, I call Bishop, I see the door, I say, I say that you. They're not respecting their heart, you know. What was given to me, look at the way they are shouting me. It has happened so many times. If you say, don't you know he's a reverend minister? He has proof his ministry. He's no more than me now. He's under mama. God has promoted him. He's direct under mama, not under me now. Stop insulting him, no? And that is how we minister, so that you respect those that have labeled before you. I'm telling, as I'm preaching to them to humble themselves and respect you, I have to tell them the exact truth. So that we'll be able to handle and look after the sheep that God has given to us in their levels. No, we start doing all this and giving the elders their respect and giving the new ones, not making the new ones that are just three years or two years to be sorting those that have been 16 years, 14 years, 12 years here. You are killing your job, you are destroying your job. You are de destroying, slaughtering the whole thing. Look at like innocent here. Innocent, you know, all of them are talking about glory, all this stuff, that, all that. They can't insult you when I'm here. They are my children. The same way you are. So, when you find anybody that is faith, humble yourself. Be careful how you talk to him. Be careful how you insult him. Because when he's presented before God, 